So you insert your file path, in this case we've called it Excel file path, into the source step of your query so that you can make your file path dynamic in an Excel cell. You press enter, but instead of your query working, you get this formula.firewall error. It says that this query references other queries or steps, so it may not directly access a data source. Please rebuild this data combination. It's another Power Query error that's actually really easy to fix. Let me show you how. In this video, we're going to take a look at the second method for fixing the formula.firewall error by rebuilding the data combination. This is a sequel to this video here on creating a dynamic file path where we learned the first method on how to fix the formula.firewall error by changing the settings to ignore the error. The key to fixing the formula.firewall error is understanding how your queries depend on each other, the role of the firewall, and thirdly, how the firewall and your query dependencies work together to frustrate you with the formula.firewall error. First, let's take a look at the role of the firewall in Power Query. If you want to skip ahead to the solution, please check out the timestamps below. But I would suggest you stick around for this part of the video as it's going to give you a much better understanding and help you up your advanced Power Query game. So, the firewall serves an important purpose. It exists to prevent data from being unintentionally sent from one source to another. For example, imagine that you were joining SQL data that included employee salaries with the results of an external OData feed. And you suddenly discovered that the salaries from SQL were being sent to the OData service. Awful news, right? This is the kind of scenario the data privacy firewall is intended to prevent. Now to understand how these queries depend on each other, let's take a look at the query before we inserted Excel file path into our source step. So we have our sales data query and our top sales product and commission calculation queries, which are both referencing our sales data query. And we have our Excel file path query. Let's go back to our sales data query and click on the source step and over here in the formula bar we can see that our source data is the sales data worksheet of the January folder which is in the C drive. Now let's click on view and query dependencies. This is a helpful tool which shows you how queries are linked together and how they depend on other queries. Here we have our sales data query referencing our January sales data sheet in the C drive. And then the top sales product and commission calculation queries are both referencing the sales data query. And on the right here, we have our Excel file path query referencing the table we created in this current workbook. Remember that table has the file path of our source data. So our firewall is happy as sales data is only accessing this one data source. And hence the firewall can control the data flowing between this query and the source data. And the same for the Excel file path query. Let's close this view and go back to our sales data query and go to the source step. And here in the formula bar, let's delete C January and replace it with Excel file path. And enter a space and type the ampersand sign and press enter. And now we get the formula.firewall error. Let's go back into our query dependencies. And here we see that our sales data query is referencing a data source, which is the Excel file path, and also referencing another query, which is the current workbook, all in this one step. Hence the firewall loses its ability to prevent the data flow from being leaked to one of these internal data sources. And the firewall wouldn't even know if data was leaked. So to prevent this, we would get the formula.firewall error. To fix this, we need to rebuild the data combination by splitting the data source and the query into two steps. So we essentially need to get to this result here, where the current workbook query is in its own step, and so is the data source for the Excel file path, so that the firewall can act as the gatekeeper around each step and our sales data query can reference each step separately. We're going to do this in two steps. First, we need to copy the code for our Excel file path parameter. To do this, click on the Excel file path parameter 
And here in Applied Steps, we have two steps, our source and navigation steps. So our source step shows the table that we brought in for our parameter. And the column header of this table is file path, and it has one row, which we know in Power Query would be position zero, as Power Query is zero based. And in the navigation step, we used drill down to tell Power Query to go and grab the contents of row one, which is position zero, from the column called file path, which is our column header of our table in the source step. And of course, Power Query references the last step which is source in this instance. So we need these two steps to be combined into the same step. So we can do this by combining the navigation step into the source step. First, copy the code in the formula bar of the navigation step, then go back to source and paste the code at the end here of our code in the formula bar and press enter. Now we've combined the two steps into one. Let's remove the navigation step by Xing it out as we don't need that anymore. Step two is where we will combine our Excel file path parameter into our sales data query. First, let's copy the entire code in the formula bar for our Excel file path query. Start with the equal sign up until the last square bracket. Then let's click on our sales data query, click on view and click on the advanced editor. And here is the code that Power Query uses for our sales data query. If you would like to learn more on the advanced editor, I highly recommend you watch this video here. The link is in the description also. Now we need to bring in the code that we copied for our Excel file path parameter before our source step. So let's enter a space before our source step and paste the code. We need to give the step a name. So let's call it path parameter. You can call it whatever you prefer. Remember to insert the comma at the end of this line of code. Now remember we inserted our Excel file path object here in the source step to make our file path dynamic. And that's when we got the formula.firewall error. But now we need our source step to reference this new step we created. Currently it's referencing our Excel file path parameter. So let's delete Excel file path and instead replace this with path parameter. So source now references this new step, which already has our Excel file path inserted in it. Now we've rebuilt the data combination by having our Excel file path parameter in its own step here in path parameter. So path parameter is bringing in our Excel file path and it's getting the current workbook. No syntax errors have been detected. Let's click on done and our queries are fixed. So we don't need the Excel file path object anymore as we've inserted that into our sales data query. Let's press right click and delete it. Now let's have a look at how the query dependencies have changed. We have our sales data referencing the current workbook and the external query. We don't have the Excel file path query in between anymore. The firewall is now happy and you'll no longer get an error. Let's send this back to Excel and let's test out the automation and hit refresh and everything updates automatically. If you're getting errors that say your download did not complete or the column of the table wasn't found and you want to know how to fix them, then you should definitely watch these videos here. Power Query Error Handling Part 1 and Refresh Breaks. Avoid the column of the table wasn't found error. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.